Hey guys, what's up? It's Mike Chan. Welcome to my kitchen. And what we're about to cook today is actually inspired by a Pixar short movie. I think you know the one I'm talking about. Bow. I've never seen this before. And there's a reason for that. Whenever like something I love gets made into a film or a movie or a video, I'm really afraid it's gonna get ruined. That's why I've never seen Mulan because I love the story of Mulan, the classic traditional real story of Mulan. You know, they didn't speak English in ancient China, right? Also, we're not that kid from Never Ending Story. We don't have pet dragons. I mean, I wish we did, it'd be cool. It'd be like a portable barbecue stove you can cuddle with. Who wouldn't want that? So when they made my favorite food in the world into a short movie, I couldn't bear to watch it until today. Let's watch it together. Well, I can't, I can't show you the whole thing because they might copyright claiming some. I'm gonna watch it and um, hopefully I can still eat a bow after this. Oh, carrot and scallion pork bow. I got you. Ah, oh my God, it came alive. Oh, that's like my worst nightmare. Oh, the bow does tai chi. Oh no, the dog, it has a little mustache. You ever had a hairy bow before? Those are never good. Oh, I got a girlfriend? Here, I'm single and this little bow gets a girlfriend. And the son took the bow's ex. So this is both confusing, <laughs> funny, uh, cutesy, and terrifying at the same time for me. All right, there we go. Four years for that. Now, let me show you how to make the juiciest pork and mushroom steam buns. And this is what you need, a couple pounds of ground pork, and you wanna keep the fat ratio about 70 lean to 30 fat, or about 80 lean to 25. You don't want something too lean, okay? Otherwise, you're not gonna get the juiciness. Mushrooms, you can use whatever type you want. You need some sesame oil, soy sauce, cornstarch, oyster sauce, Chinese cooking wine. I'm using chicken bouillon powder here, but you can use salt if you want instead of that. I like the flavor of this more, so I'm using that. Six cloves of garlic, some ginger, scallion. Obviously, you need flour, and I really couldn't find any flour in any supermarket right now. They're all sold out. All the flour, all the yeast, all the toilet paper is gone in the supermarket, so apparently when we quarantine, the two things we think about the most are baking and pooping. That makes sense. Anyway, so I went to a Chinese supermarket and they still had flour and they had yeast. So I have some instant yeast right here. What you also need is a steamer. You can use either metal steamer or bamboo steamer. I really do recommend you guys getting a bamboo steamer because what the bamboo steamer does is that it absorbs moisture. So the moisture doesn't drip back onto the food you're trying to steam. You need a rolling pin and some parchment or wax paper. You have all that. We need a couple of big mixing bowls. Here we go. First thing we need to do is mix the dough. And before we do that, we have to activate our yeast. So take a bowl, add one cup of warm water, teaspoon of sugar, teaspoon of yeast. Stir vigorously. Make sure all the sugar melts. And then just let it sit there for about 10 minutes and let the yeast activate. And you'll know it's activated when you see a bunch of little bubbles forming at the top. Once the yeast is activated, oh, just take a deep breath of that. Oh, that smells great. Now add two cups of all-purpose flour to a big mixing bowl, and then we're gonna dump this in while mixing our dough at the same time. And we're gonna do it in three intervals, and we're only gonna mix in one direction. Once all the yeast is in, start kneading. This is the most intimate part of the process. The more you massage, more comfortable you make it, the better it's gonna taste. See, you do something good for the food, the food does something good for you too. And we do this until we get to what the Chinese say, the three cleans. A clean mixing bowl, clean hands, and clean dough. All right, bottom of my pan at least, it's clean. The dough itself, Slappable smooth. Now we're gonna cover this up and put it somewhere warm, about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So what I recommend is heating up your oven a little bit and then putting the dough in there. And then leave it alone, let it do its thing. It's gonna sit there, get lazy, turn into like a couch dough, get all big and fluffy and chubby. Then we're gonna eat it. While we anxiously wait for our dough to rise, it's gonna take about an hour and a half and it's gonna double in size. That does take some time to plump up. We're gonna make our filling. 
Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna finely chop up our garlic and we need one teaspoon of finely chopped up ginger. And then we're gonna dice up about a cup and a quarter of mushrooms. Let's make our filling. 16 ounces or a pound of ground pork, about a cup and a quarter of diced up mushrooms. Like a little bit of mushrooms left over. And honestly, you can't have good buns without some fun, guys. Anyway, more the merrier. Our scallions and ginger, the six cloves of garlic, two tablespoons of soy sauce, two tablespoons of sesame oil, tablespoon of oyster sauce, two teaspoons of cornstarch, teaspoon of sugar, two teaspoons of salt, or in my case, two teaspoons of chicken bouillon powder. Now, this is where you can kind of customize a little bit. You don't want to make your bun too salty because you can't unsalt something. I have a really heavy palate, so I like things a little more flavored, but you can for sure just do half of this, do a batch if you like it saltier, because with buns, you always got your dipping sauce to rely on. So do what you feel comfortable with. For me, two teaspoons of chicken bouillon, two teaspoons of white pepper powder. Finally, two tablespoons of Chinese cooking wine. Get a half a cup of warm water. And we're gonna mix this in with our ingredients slowly. So three different pours. Each time you pour a little bit. Give it a little mix. And only mix in one direction because if you do right and then if you do left, you're gonna break up the meat and the texture is not gonna be as good. There we go. Now we can do a little test. You can make a little test wonton to try the flavor out. For me, I'm just gonna stir fry a little bit and see. Oh. That tastes delicious. Oh man. Oh, that is good. You know, in China, my grandma, probably like a lot of Chinese grandmas and parents, they do this, and this is hardcore. They taste it just like this. I, I don't think they actually swallow it, but I mean, oh, raw pork in your mouth, never a good thing. Okay, this is ready to go inside the dough. Let's see how our dough is doing. Ooh, all that yeast. Smells so good. Soft and airy. I feel like every single time I do this, I should hear <laughs> or however he laughs. Probably less creepily than that. The world's creepiest dough man. I think this is Doughboy's father. The scary dough crow. Now you see all these air pockets. That's not gonna work, so we gotta knead it one more time for a few minutes. Just to squeeze all the last air pockets out of here. Take half the dough. We're just gonna roll it out. And we wanna be able to cut this into six sort of even pieces. And you can make these into as big or as small of a bun as you want. So if you wanna cut it up into eight pieces, seven pieces, that's completely up to you. Take a piece, squish it down. And when you're rolling this out, this is not like a dumpling. Leave a bit of thickness in the middle, but don't leave the size too thin. This is a bun. If you leave the size too thin, the bun might collapse. So middle, leave it thick because that ball of pork and awesome, amazing ingredients is gonna sit on there sweating through to the bottom. And we want that middle part, the thick part, to act like a little bun sponge, or a little bun diaper trap, all that juice, cause you want all that juice here, all right? Not on the bottom of your steamer. So right there, slightly bigger than the palm of your hand. That should be the size of your dough. And you see, thick in the middle, thinner, but not incredibly thin on the side. 
This is what you want. Add about a tablespoon of filling or more if you made a bigger dough. And to fold it, really, really simple. Edges together, close it. And then index finger on the left hand, it's gonna keep pushing folds to my right index finger. And my left thumb is just gonna keep squishing the filling, tugging it in to my dough bed. And I'm gonna keep folding. I'm gonna do about, I'm gonna do at least 10 of these folds. And we're gonna to get to this part. We're going to push this part with this part together with a little twist. And then right here, see that? We like to call a little fish mouth. A little place where the bun can let out steam. All right, once your buns are folded, get some parchment paper, line the bottom of your steamer. Give them enough space from each other because these are going to expand. Once we're ready to steam, I'm gonna put this over the water for about 10 to 15 minutes and let it rise a little more. Then we're gonna bring the water to a boil and let it cook for 20 minutes. Please do not open the steamer, okay? Turn the fire off and let it sit there for about five minutes because if you open it right now, that bun's are gonna sink. And guys, nobody likes a saggy bun. Nobody. Time's up. Fluffy dough, meaty, porky, great texture from the mushrooms. See how they taste. Oh. Juicy. Great pork and mushroom flavor. We need some dipping sauce with this. Soy sauce, vinegar, hot oil. Look at how fluffy and airy the dough is. Delicious little spongy mattress and the juice is soaking into the dough. Mmm, mmm. So juicy and fluffy and perfect. So there you go. If you wanna know, but it feels like to have a freshly made pork bun. Even though you're at home, you can't get to a Chinese restaurant, you can still have some amazing steamed mushroom pork bun. My ingredients are listed down below, check it out. Also, a couple notes about this recipe. Okay, the flavoring is really up to you. So try the filling before you put it into a bun. You should always try to err on the side of less salty because there's always dipping sauce and there's always the opportunity to add more flavoring into the filling after your first batch. Also, another thing, when you're rolling out the dough, don't make the sides way too thin, okay? You gotta have some thickness, otherwise there's a risk of the dumplings caving in on itself, okay? Dumplings, we usually try to make the sides as thin as possible, not for buns. But there you go, that's how you make steamed mushroom pork buns. Go try it for yourself. Let me know how you like it. And until we cook again, see you later.